This is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm here with Wicker. And Wicker, hey, hey, good afternoon. Uh, good evening, actually. Good evening. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself? Tell people who you are and and uh, where you are. Sure. I'm Victor Villen from Stockholm. Uh, work for Avanade as our global innovation lead for modern workplace. And um, been in SharePoint MVP now for nine consecutive years, I think it is. So and been working with SharePoint and, and things around that for far too long. So I've been wondering too, because I know that you do a lot of events. You speak, I see you at events at different places in the world from you know, throughout the year. It's always funny. I, I, I see people in the community more than I see like people here locally where I live. Um, so, I mean, how global is your role? I mean, you say it's in the title. But mm-hmm. I mean, so a global lead, I mean, how much do you, is it, is it global, but you, you stick to mostly Europe or do you truly go around the world with, uh, with your company? Very good question. So, so yes, my, my role is global and we have our headquarters in Seattle. So these are my usual meeting hours in the evenings here when, when Pacific time starts. So uh, works out good for me. I, I don't mind that. Um, I travel from time to time. It's more about the, the clients when I want to meet them and when they want to meet me. I don't travel that much for internal stuff. We do that all over teams nowadays, which works great. So, and then we are also a truly global team. We sit in every corner of the world. So yes, I have my meetings very early in the morning. It's sometimes with my Indian teams in Australia, et cetera. And then the, the usual evening meetings with the Pacific time people. You know, it, it's, it, it's funny that we've, so I've been involved with collaboration technology since the nineties, the, the late nineties and, and have been in the number of companies that mm. have created collaboration technology and yet, we are still just, I, I, I'm sure that your company's similar where um, we're involved with this technology and yet there's still, it's been kind of a start stop to get a lot of companies to really kind of embrace the model. And, and it is a cultural uh, a change that's required to be able to work like this. Yes. Then there are certain realities of, of the uh, kind of follow the sun team or project things are going on. I did the same thing where I was based in Seattle, managing engineering resources, developers in India, uh, working with clients in Asia Pacific, as well as in Europe and trying to do meetings where you have people that are on the clock or around the world yeah. is incredibly difficult. Uh, it is absolutely. And, and many of the calls we have, we have to do it twice. So everyone can be on board, specifically if you're presenting something uh, like I did today, just prior to this one, I did one session, I have to present it again later. And sometimes we actually take turns. So I have a colleague in, in the US that sometimes takes those time zones and I take the European one and Asia time zones. Yeah, it, it's a, uh, that, that's, it's, it's also interesting when you talk about from the data s- standpoint, I mean, you said you guys are using Teams now. Mm. I, uh, side topic, I'd love to understand some of the best practices, the learnings um, from that. Because there are, with any new technology, there's mm. there's quirks, you know, yeah. uh, uh, you know to, to make it work. I'm talking a lot about information architecture and the mm. complexities of that. Uh, and, and while Teams is relatively flat in its structure, mm. You, you can't forget about your information architecture, all the data that, that lives in SharePoint and other uh, sources. And, and so it actually makes it more complex. I don't mm. know how you guys handle that. So we have, I would say we have embraced that flat structure. Uh, when Teams came out and we were pretty early on the platform, we essentially decided everyone can create the team, no matter what. And we did the same thing with SharePoint team sites and communication sites nowadays as well. But it is a flat structure and being in, if you're a normal consultant, I think at Avanade, you, you're probably a member of a handful of teams, but in, in, when you come up to the roles that I have, you're a member of 10, 20 different project teams and you have the 10, 20 different internal teams and your other teams. So yes, it is a challenge sometime. And we actually had a podcast recording with the New Habits podcast today. We discussed some of those kind of things. We discussed the private channel. Uh, thing when the, the idea is to have two teams, one private team and one non-private team. And yeah. we also talked about the concept of being having hub teams or grouping teams together. So yes, it is a challenge, I would say. When, and, and unfortunately, the client doesn't really scale uh, 
to those number of teams even and then then don't add if you add channels to that it's even more complex hey what are your thoughts on that whole concept of the private channel so and then as i said in the podcast we did i really like that kind of thing so i don't have to have uh, dual teams uh, or even uh, for instance we uh, the example is that you have a team project team you have a clients there you might have partners there you might have pms in there and that could essentially uh, quadruple the number of teams you need to have so the concept of private teams i think or private channels i think that's quite important uh, and if but only if it's implemented in the right way uh, and, and there's paul shafland said in that podcast we have as well so the complexity we know with all the complexity we have with permissions in SharePoint for instance right. we don't want to end up with that kind of stuff again right it's it's a I mean the, the fear is that you know that if we go and create essentially nested groups within mm. them, and duplicate all of that yeah the complexity and the and the permissions around mm-hmm. that I mean it could be excruciating if it's not done the right way I love the concept mm. uh, for all the same reasons Mm. Uh, and and I was just wondering, I mean, it, w- without having that in place today, how do you get around that? What are you doing? Yeah. yeah, so it's either multiple teams or you have small group chats on the side with those specific people. So and th- that is the, the only way to solve it. Or it ends up in an email thread somewhere or another private SharePoint site, a team site somewhere that you can link to. So, you, for instance, if you would, if you just after the, the, the sharing the files privately, you can still have a sh- just a team site, check on team site on the side or a document library and link that into, so you can still use some of the permission constructs in, in SharePoint if you want to achieve sort of similar result, but just without the conversation. Yeah, I, you know, I've advised to folks, depending on, you know, there are so many different scenarios for that as mm-hmm. well. And, and I mean, certainly you can still uh, restrict that access to the content by having a, you know, a more locked down, controlled, uh, a separate SharePoint site that's mm. within that, and then you can still have that as a tab or you know within the file structure and people that mm. couldn't get access can't mm. but mm. what you're lacking is the conversation aspect of that yes so, like mm. I said, you yeah. can have a you can have a, a, a group for that that private channel uh, you know mm. you can have a a group chat where those mm. restricted to those people mm. that makes it very difficult if you've got multiple conversations that need to happen within that channel oh, yeah. threads Mm. Uh, another idea is that you can go do a private uh, Yammer group, mm. and uh, once again, you can link to that, and only those people who have mm. access can get in there. But that mm. you can do today, mm. and yeah, you, that, that exactly. chat capability. You you can achieve many of the same results, but uh, you, you, I really want that streamlined right. experience. One it, kind of uh, it's context. So I, it's still context switching. I yeah, mean, that's, yeah, that's a is. major problem, mm. right? And specifically, if you're on, on a phone, for instance, we know that the external apps doesn't work that well with links and those kind of things. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I don't know the time frame. I, I didn't mean to take this sideways into that, you know, but it's a, well, I know because you're living and breathing that. I mean, that's, it's something we're both passionate about, talk a lot about. Yeah. Um, and just coming from the, the admin, the security, the, uh, uh, you know, the governance side of these things, I mean, mm-hmm. I'm looking at just the nightmare with some of the initial thoughts that were put out by the product team around how they might approach that. You know, mm. I just kind of went, well, like, whoa, 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 wait a second. Mm. You're taking something that is, you know, still with the complexity. Uh, uh, and again, I'm, I'm looking at it now from an information architecture standpoint of mm. SharePoint and everything that we've done for decades around SharePoint and mm. now teams and the flat structure and yep. your assets spread between them and conversations mm. and meetings and all of these other so video and everything else that's being added in there and a- adding yet another wrinkle where i have to manage and and don't have the tooling to mm. adequately manage those permissions i mean it's a compliance security nightmare to yep. think of you know, having that mm. and, and then there's the age old you know if people that are in that private chat there somebody is the whole team is out to lunch together and they're hit collectively by a bus you know mm. for admin how do you go in there and yeah. get access what does that look like anyway yeah, be- and also things such uh, you mentioned information architecture governance and archive if you have multiple teams like three or two two or three or four teams with the same kind of project and whatnot how do you archive them together and and get back in time yeah. and then another thing where I hope teams are going is that we actually get our line of business applications inside of teams, such as bots, uh, messaging extensions, tabs, and whatnot, then it really makes sense to have 
for instance, you're having discussion around the rich card with the information from the CRM system or something, you might want to have that in your channel, uh, in a private channel or something like that. So when we add that extra spicing on top of Microsoft Teams with those integration, I think it makes sense to still have one team with private channels implemented in a smart way. Right. Well, and I think it all it all comes down to it's the it's the slowly we're building and building and adding to what is writable, uh, you know, to the uh, Microsoft Graph mm. we'll through that. And once mm. once all of those systems and our those other third party integrated applications or mm. health systems can be integrated in and write to and be captured within the graph, then it can be yep. through, yep. you know through all the, the different platforms. So, yeah, I mean, it's, I, I keep telling people, it's like, it's not there yet where we know it's mm. going, but it's directionally correct. Mm, yeah. so we're moving in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, yeah. Are, what else are you like talking about presenting on, you know, these days? So, uh, of course, um, my big passion uh, work-wise right now is Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. And, and as you've probably seen, that's what I've been presenting on the most conferences over the last two years or so. Uh, I would say borderline between Teams and SharePoint. Uh, and, and of course, with the Microsoft Graph, as you mentioned, the, as a glue in the middle there. Uh, so I will be doing at the European Collab Summit a full day workshop on Microsoft Teams with Paul Schaeflein. I want to build applications on top of that. Mm -hmm. But I'll also be at the SharePoint conference talking about SharePoint framework and building full page app experiences as well. So it's still, even though I don't do that much or I'm not doing production code at work anymore, uh, I, I still do have a lot of passion for, for building those kind of stuff and exploring these new technologies and see how we can use them, uh, etc. But also, uh, I'm that kind of guy that my hobby, my, my free time and work goes very much together. So actually, if I can find it here. So I have these kind of small devices here and that I'm working on Arduino stuff. And this one is actually connected to the, the Microsoft Graph uh, and reading my <laughs> reading my uh, present status and those kind of things. Uh, I, I've, you know, I've never seen a Microsoft Zune that has had so many cables. To it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then what I'm doing now as well is in, in connecting that small Arduino thing to my Ikea standing desk here so I can control it via the phone yeah. and those kind of things. So the passion for technology for me is there. And, and if I can combine that with the stuff I learned from work with graph permissions and whatnot, that is awesome, I think. Yeah, you know, I've been playing a lot with, and I just do, so I, I don't know if you've seen, I do these uh, monthly webinars with Tom Duff around productivity. And one of the items that I shared was, um, essentially doing integrations with, uh, with Microsoft to do with mm -hmm. art speakers. And so I have, you know, Siri on my phone, I've yep. got uh, Alexa sitting looking at me, staring at me right there yeah, yeah. In my window, you know, with all these, uh, I don't have a, a, you know, a Google device, a Google home, but, uh, you know, the ability to go and, um, and integrate with mm -hmm. office 365 and with the applications that we love with the yeah. devices that we have, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. becoming more and more common. And so it's this, it's AI, it's IOT, it is yes, it's yeah. productivity, it's kind of, it's, it's all of those things coming together. There's a Venn diagram <laughs> somewhere. That yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. And as you mentioned, so productivity, the, the reason I'm building this one and integrating it to my desk here as well, it's actually, I have a motion sensor to see how often I, I'm at, how long I'm actually at my desk. We have the My Analytics and stuff, that's just, just checking my email and then how much I'm in the meetings, et cetera. But actually how much time Am I, am I standing or sitting by my desk each day? Uh, I'm scared about the results, but it's going to be interesting to see. That would be interesting. Uh, and, uh, you know, just the little things of, you know, uh, well, I know the personal productivity data and mm -hmm. the, uh, you know, there's, there's pros and cons about tracking that kind of data because mm -hmm. just because you're in meetings more, just because you're sitting more than standing, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean that's a bad thing because no. it could be the, the right thing. It's, it's data. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, uh, I, I, it, it, there's more and more things that we can go out and capture and measure these days. And, uh, I, I see people's anxiety getting higher because of it. <laughs> yeah. I think you have to take it with, you know, kind of, uh, measured, measured, uh, uh, take in of that data. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Anyway, well, it was, it's, it's been great talking to you about this stuff. I, I well, yeah. definitely want to jump in, you know, and understand more about what you're doing. Are you blogging about all that stuff, like your desk? So, yeah, that, that is the intention. Once I get it to work, everything, then absolutely I'll blog about that. And, and uh, 
actually no I, I find out, found out the solution how to integrate my IKEA desk I, I burned a, a circuit board for that but I'll, I'll share that experience and that's gonna be I, fun and I do love how you get multiple plugs there for IKEA as well so. <laughs> yeah so, of course. My, we're monetizing these videos, folks. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's good. <laughs> uh, well, how, so how can people get in touch with you? If they want to reach out to you or follow you, where's the best yeah. place to find you? So, I uh, would we'll say the easiest way is to find me on Twitter at my Victor handle. It's WNC in that, W I C T O R. That's probably the easiest way. Uh, and that you were you early me. on to grab that. That was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so over 10 years now, I think, right? Yeah, that's crazy. I know. It is. Yeah. I went with the long one, but and <laughs> my, my Twitter handle is just like my blog, Buckley Planet. It was, it came out of me mocking my brother-in-law. I did okay. it as a joke because he had his last name Fisher, Fisher Planet website and stuff. And so I just, as <laughs> on a lark, I created Buckley Planet to kind of put on him and it stuck. You know? Yeah, it stuck. Yeah. Anyway. Well, it was great talking cool. to you, Wicker, and, and I'll see you in, well, in a, in a couple of weeks, you're coming exactly. over, aren't you? I'm yep. coming over to Seattle and Redmond. It's going to be awesome. All right. We'll see you in uh, mid-March. And uh, thanks a Take lot care. for joining. Yeah. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>